Hello and welcome to Perfect Date, the visual novel where you date cats, because this is what we need in our lives. So, uh, I know next to nothing about this one other than you date cats, and there's apparently British comedy, which sounded like a good option. Uh, so I briefly looked at the how to play. It looks like, uh, apart from the regular how to progress a visual novel, you have health, which for some reason you run out of health and you need to restore, so we're going to have to figure out how that works and why. Uh, running out of hearts has bad things happening. And finishing three research events will finish the chapter, so make sure you've done everything before you've done that. So apparently it's also a little bit of mystery too. And yeah, keep an eye out for anything odd. So, let's get to it. Okay, let us see, who do we want to be? Alright, let's just hit the random name for a minute. Brian, Ruby, Flippa, Jack, Chloe, very, very. Alright, Felix, I feel that one's just cheating. Alright, let's see, let's... Hmm... I can't do Catus Maxis. I mean, we could always go with the easy. Ah, oh, no, I can't do Chairman Meow either. All right, crap. We gotta have something for this. I mean, I could just do Arya. I'm like, that's not very. What do cats like to do? Okay, now we're not doing that. Okay, all right, all right, Buttsicle, because that is my name, the name of our cat, or my cat's nickname, so we gotta do Buttsicle. Okay, autosave navigation. Uh, okay, apparently you can decline autosaving, that's the first time I've seen that in a game. Could be good if something goes horribly wrong. Chapter 1. I'm not sure how long we've been sailing, but it feels like forever. I'm not feeling too well now, so it's a huge relief to hear the deck lad shout. Ah, you must be the deck lad, Joe. Island approaching, make yourself ready. I'm finally here. When I applied last month, I was just another broke student living off baked beans and didn't really think I had a chance of being accepted to be part of the prestigious Cat Island research team. Yet here it is. The little black dot in the distance, growing bigger by the second, is the infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next few months. My heart momentarily skips a beat. What if it was a mistake? What if they accepted someone else's application and accidentally sent the offer to me? I rummage about in the bag until I find my papers. It's blank! Oh shit! <laughs> DP Corporation. Dear Buttsicle, we are pleased to be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Popper. Oh, he's a poor cat. He's a popper. At our research facility on Cat Island. It's because, oh, he's a grad student, probably. The position will be for an initial period of eight weeks. Your contract will be sent separately. We are looking forward to working with you. Yours sincerely, Professor Popper. PhD. Biscuits. It's biscuits. No, no mistake, that's my name. Right there in the top left hand corner, Buttsicle. <laughs> and there's his name at the bottom. The genius behind this whole operation. Professor Popper, science genius, and my new boss. <laughs> I look up from my papers to see dry land rapidly approaching before us. It looks pretty wet to me, but that's beside the point. There's lots of birds too. This isn't Cat Island. Those birds would be eaten. It seems as we're surrounded by a huge barrier of unimpenetrable black rocks. <laughs> Like, okay. As we get closer, we're not slowing down, and I begin to worry that we're gonna crash into them! Then, at the very last moment, we take a sharp left turn, and suddenly we're sailing smoothly towards a jetty through an opening in the rocks. I blow out the breath that I've been holding and break into a smile. Nicely done, Skip! Oh my god, my person is so happy! Ah! <laughs> The ferryman comes out from behind the steering wheel, ignoring my attempts at camaraderie, and shouts rather brusquely. Oi, take all your belongings! We won't be back for days, so don't leave nothing you don't need! Thank you. <laughs> I smile weakly at the ferryman and his son and pick up my bags, ready to disembark. We glide seamlessly up to the wooden jetty and the son leaps ashore to tie us off. Leaps. He's greeted by a bulky man in a uniform who I take to be a security officer of some kind. It's nothing but just some really gruff characters right now. Joe. Sir, caught you a mouse. <laughs> and then he laughs loudly as though he said the funniest thing he's ever heard. It's disconcerting. The security guard remains surly and turns his attention to me. Let me be having you then. <laughs> I cannot do a short snake. That's not even close. <laughs> Whatever. He holds out his large hand, which I'm assuming is an offering to help me off the boat, but as I reach out to take it, he snatches it away, throwing me off balance so I almost fall over to the other side. What a great start. ID card. Oh, oh, I see. Of course. I reach into my back pocket and hand him uh, the laminated card I was given on the mainland. Oh. 
Him butticle. Birthday 1117. <laughs> Why January 1st, 2017? Oh, date issued, okay. That's not even today's date. Significantly off, but okay. Disco cat. Hey, Becky. He barely looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder. <clears throat> this way. I follow him down a dirt track path and get my first proper view of the island. It's beautiful, lush and green. I'm already under its spell. Oh. After no more than a couple minutes of checking, we're in base camp, which consists of an assortment of tents and huts. Among them are two more solid looking structures, one larger and one smaller. I presume these are the labs. The whole camp is moderate but functional. It reminds me of an army outpost. I'm struck by the lack of people. In fact, there's no one around apart from an older woman sitting outside peeling a pile of potatoes. Okay. I smile, give her a nod, and she just stares back at me. I'm the potato. I try not to get potato. Potaroid, potaroid. Ah. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> he stopped at the largest of the tents, indicating that I should go inside. I feel rude just walking in, so I make my presence known first. Um, hello? A firm but friendly voice calls out, Come. Ooh. Oh, this looks like a great place. I walk in and there he is, hunched over some documents, the great Professor Popper. Sir, it's an honor to meet you. Yes, yes, you must be Botsicle. Come on in, my dear, glad to have you on board. Good journey. Well, long. Yes, indeed, we're rather tucked away here. Let me offer you some refreshment. Water, coffee, something stronger perhaps. Whiskey, all right. I'm fine, just some water. It'd be rude to let you drink whiskey on your own. I'd love a cup of tea if there's a pot on the go. Is there no coffee option? I'm fine, water, whiskey, tea. Oh, come on. He offered coffee and I won't even take, I'll drink my own coffee then. Let's say, yeah, let's just say, I'd love a cup of tea if there's a pot on the go. Ah, I can tell you're new. The tea here tastes like cat piddle. It actually is cat piddle. I just bubble it and sell it. You really don't want to drink it. I pour you whiskey. Oh, see, this is how I get the coffee. All right, there we go. I picked the coffee choice. He pours me a cup of coffee from his canteen instead. It's a good thing I like coffee. Except I wouldn't ask for coffee, apparently. So, that works. It'll take you a while to find your- wait. All right, this is good. It'll take you a while to find your way around here and discover how it all works. So, for today, I thought I would just get you kiddied out and maybe introduce you to some of the locals. The cats, that is. I believe you've already met most of the human locals. Oh, I've only met the ferryman and the security guard who brought me here. Yes, that's about it. And the lady outside? Ah, oh, Miss Marigold. Her and her husband are the caretakers. Wonderful couple, the Marigolds. You'll meet them before too long. We're a tidy little family here, Butsicle, and I'm sure you'll fit right in. Thank you, sir, I hope so. His voice is going to be the death of me. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so first things first. This is your basic kit. He begins going through a pile of things on his desk, explaining each of them in turn. This is your backpack. You put it on your back, and you pack it. You put shit in it. We'll be going on plenty of field trips, so it'll be useful. That's for your own water bottle. Some disinfectant hand spray. Ah, these heavy-duty reinforced gloves are essential when tagging cats out in the wild. Don't want any scratches from felines we don't know, now do we? I suppose not. I shove each item into my new backpack as he gives them to me. Likewise, these goggles are to be brought on all field trips. This lot here, he indicates to a small pile of what looks like laundry. This basic uniform. Dab coats, masks, stethoscope, etc. Portable first aid kit, camping knife with all tool attachments, USB port storage and everything, Wi-Fi enabled. And finally, without a doubt, most importantly, yarn. Is it yarn? Oh no, it, whatever this is. He holds up something that looks a lot like a mobile phone, except clearly it isn't one. This is your catalog. Nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'm lonely. Catalog? Yes. The name comes from the earliest versions. It was initially designed to record and store data on the cats, scan them, and log their details. But as you can see, we've come a long way. Now you can use it to communicate with the rest of our team. I've added everyone's contact details for you. Listen to music, take photos, there's even a pen that comes with it. To insert microchips into the back of cats' necks so we can track them. Essentially, it's a cell phone. With the cat tracker. 
It's a very valuable piece of equipment, Butsicle, and I need you to protect it above all else. Do you understand? I don't have insurance on this thing, and I need that back. He looks directly at me in the eye. Oh, he was looking directly in the eye and clearly expects a response. Yes, sir, of course. I will look after it. Good. You get to know all the functions as you go along, but for now, I suggest we take a stroll and see if we can't find a few friends just to introduce you so you can try it out. He hands me the gadget. I feel a bit nervous taking charge of it, but I'm also really keen to have a go. Yeah. And God, I can't wait to get out of that room that looks like a pile of shit. <laughs> Saving. That cat is swimming, I just realized. We head down to the beach, the professor explaining things as we go. The mixture of the mixture of terrain on Cat Island is quite unique. Even in such a relatively small area, you'll find forests, mountains, jungles, beaches, woodland. All these different geological and ecological zones in one place. It really is remarkable. It certainly is. Can I go home now? Even the lack of wildlife is in itself quite remarkable. Ignore the birds that you saw when you came in. What do you mean, Professor? Well, put it simply, there's a type of force field that surrounds the item, disallowing anything to enter. Have you ever seen Star Wars? It's nothing like that, but it's kind of like that. Just think that. You mean literally anything? Absolutely. No birds except the ones you saw earlier. Fish or creatures can penetrate it. Maybe the birds were outside the force field, but we'll, we'll go with that. Forgive my lack of intelligence on the subject, but uh, we're here. Are we not animals? Philosophical debate about humanity. Ah! Ha 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 ha! I see what you mean. Well, there is of course one small break in this visible wall, and that's where we built the jetty. Hmm. Let's not get too bogged down in this right now. Ha, <laughs> water humor. What you need to know right now is that basically the island is a peanut. Shaped like a peanut. <laughs> it's not a peanut. <laughs> Peanuts can't get through the force fields. <laughs> He's picked up a nearby stick and draws a simple map in the sand. It's a peanut! <laughs> This is our island. It's very well known to us. It's very tiny. I want to go home, too. We've been researching here for many years. The other end is not so familiar to us. We've encountered difficulties that hinder our progress. Force fields. Oh, oh god. We're doing the Doki Doki literature thing. Apparently this is a horror game. Brace for impact. What kind of difficulties, Professor? Well, we're not as sure as we'd like to be, but what I can tell you is the environment has an adverse effect upon humans, including nausea at the very least. Usually death, mostly death. And at the worst, fainting, migraines, possible nerve damage. Yeah, gosh, that's serious. <laughs> as I say, it's best to keep away, but let's not get into all that right now, my dear. You've had a long day. For now, let us just say we refer to the far end as the danger zone. Unfortunately, we don't have a highway there. We need to get Kenny Loggins on this shit. What? Who's Kenny Loggins? I must ask you not to put yourself at risk by venturing beyond this mountain range. He refers to the map once more, drawing a line just past the center and an X through the end section. X is danger. Don't. Now it looks like a, a live sentient peanut who's died and he had one eye because he was a cyclops peanut. Cyclops peanut. There are wild, aggressive cats out there. I wouldn't want you to get too close to them. Unlike our friendly little fellows close to home. He's led me to a spot where a few cats are lounging about. What do you say we try your catalog now, Butsicle? He stoops down and picks up one of the animals, a disgruntled looking cat who was sleeping in- Why am I still doing his voice, this narrator? Uh, who was sleeping under the shade of a palm tree. Oh god, you are Garfield. The cat lets out a displeased meow, but doesn't struggle. Its large body, billowing with long orange fur, fur just kind of hangs in the professor's arm in lazy resignation. Would you like to have a go at scouting this delightful chop? I find the on switch and somewhat timidly activate it. Boop, boop. The gadget immediately comes to artificial light, emitting a boop, boop, boop sound with a red pulsating light. I select the app. I select the app labeled cat scan and it loads instantly. There's no delay on this thing. Wow. The professor holds the cat towards me with arms outstretched. I'm sure that. I'm sure he said the scanning chip is implanted in the back of the neck somewhere, but it's difficult to find this one's neck amidst the thick cloud of fur. I blow to make a parting and press the catalog to its skin. Yeah, I figure if you blow on a cat, it would probably be like, Meh, but oh well. I guess they usually, some don't mind. It's a bit like scanning groceries in the supermarket where I used to work. That should do it. And he plops the marmalade tom back in the shade. Sure enough, upon withdrawal, I find the cat has been successfully scanned. Meow. He's Floofy Butt! Aw, oh, alright, <laughs> I already like Floofy Butt. Aw, oh, 10 year old, 4 month red tabby Persian. Okay, I color red. I didn't know cats could have red eyes. I guess it's more of a lightish brown thing. Unless it is actually just pure blood red. That'd be interesting. Amazing! 
I can go shopping for cats now. Clever, isn't it? A large part of your job here will be to tag and scan the cats, such as Mr. Floofy Butt here, but it looks like you'll have no problems in that area. Excellent work, Buttsicle. Thank you, sir. I can't wait to get started. Well, why don't you get a bit more practice with the catalog and scan the rest of them while we're here? These five spend a lot of time together. They're like a little family, aren't you? Ha! Huh, yes, you are. The professor seems to be a genuine cat lover like me. I think we're gonna get on great. All right, here it goes. No, no help this time. Scared portrait. The professor steps back. The first cat I approach is very friendly with beautiful calico markings. It comes to me, already purring. Yeah! Did you get little tiny arms in the photo? <laughs> okay, here's Trixie. Female cat, 3H, 3 years, 8 months, short calico, American short hair with green eyes. Next is an elegant, sleek, hairless cat sitting gracefully in the sun. She doesn't pay much attention to me and allows me to scan her with minimal fuss. Meow, snooty booty. <laughs> yep, snooty booty. Also doing the one eye wink thing. Not sure why we all do that. Thanks. Reasonable. The fourth cat I approach is a noisy one. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> it's McMurphy. Hmm. He seems like he could be a hard-boiled detective, McMurphy. Hmm. He is a cross breed. We don't know what. Many, many things. And finally, the one I'm deliberately putting off until last. He's been skulking around the edge of the activity, eyeing me suspiciously, as though he could pounce at any moment. I laugh at myself, already projectiling, projectiling, project. Projecting personalities onto these animals. I'm Kibbles. Fuck you. Uh, okay. All done! I hope you've enjoyed meeting some of the locals. The professor lets out a little laugh. I have a feeling you'll get to know them quite well in time. That's probably enough for your first day, don't you think? It's quite a lot to take in. I'm suddenly exhausted and grateful to be heading back to camp. Fade. Saving. Oh god, this is horrible. It's quite late by the time I've unpacked and settled myself in, but I want to write my journal entry before going to sleep. I'm surprised at how chilly it is. I have pulled my sleeping bag right up to my chin, but I still feel goose pimples blooming all over my arms. <laughs> goose pimples. Okay, this must be a British thing. Silvering, I rub them to warm myself up. It makes me smile to think that this inherent reaction to the cold is what will be keeping my new feline friends warm tonight. My eyelids close, thinking of the cats, the island, and the professor. The world around me drifts away as I float up into a dream. Doki Doki Literature Club, go fuck off. This is not your game yet. Maybe later. I'm not sure how long I've been asleep, but I wake with a violent jolt that leaves me sitting upright. It's too dark to see anything, but I hear a rustling and a strange electric noise, one that in my sleepy confusion I can't place right away. Boop, boop, boop. The catalog! I've been scanned! Oh no! Acting on instinct, I scramble to my feet and follow the noise out of the tent. I look around me and my fear is confirmed when I catch the sight of a pulsing red light getting fainter in the direction of the forest. I snap into action, running as fast as I can. Barefoot, dressed in my pajamas, running at full speed through the forest in the dark of the night. I must be crazy! The word of Professor Popper are ringing in my ears. I need you to protect it above all else. And you've already failed. My legs are trembling beneath me. I stop, feeling my heartbeat heavy throughout my body. I wheeze in and out the breath. Breathe. The breath billowing in front of me in white puffs. I shouldn't feel like this. Why am I so dizzy? I try to get my bearings and realize I've turned into a cat. I mean, I've bounded perilously close to the danger zone. Oh, you're so cute and terrorizing, especially that one over there. Uh, yeah, that one. I, oh, I can't, can't take you seriously. This one just looks constipated. <laughs> or this one. Yeah, there we go. I can just make out the shapes of some large animals in front of me before my eyes close and I drop to my knees. <laughs> Dot dot dot. I open my eyes. The calico cat I scanned yesterday is sitting in front of me. She drops the catalog at my feet. Boop. <coughs> I pass out. <laughs> Should have had that whiskey. And then we went disco partying. Hello, can you hear me? Says wait. What what, what should Floofy Bud be? I'm gonna kill her. Hello, can you hear me? I'm the Floofy Bud. Okay. <laughs> what? What is it? I'm not gonna remember these voices. Cause I have to do long ones. Don't be ridiculous, kiddos. It's a human. Uh, oh yeah. I can smell it now. It smells like a human. Oh, do be quiet. Hi. Are they alive? Of course. 
It's alive and breathing, you imbecile. Uh, isn't it moving? I'm just like, which one was which again? Would you come over and give it some space? Move back a bit. Yes, stand back. Move out of the way. Let me have a proper look. I begin to come to. The Sphinx cat is standing over me as I open my eyes. We stare at each other for a moment before I take in what's happening. Is this one defective? Oh god, I feel sick. I'm gonna puke. The cats watch me intently. Am I going insane? Ow, my head! What is it chattering about? They're scared and confused. Let me talk to them. Um, human. You alright? You, I remember. You took my catalog. Oh, but I gave it back to you. It's in your pocket, meow. <laughs> I try and reach into my pocket and realizing my hands are scratched to shreds. Ow! What is wrong with my hands? I try to stand. Ow, ow, my feet. What happened? Yeah, um, uh, I guess it's from the climbing. I told you it wasn't ready for that. What's that? Ready for what? Its anatomical structure is far too delicate. I, sh I tried to slow it down. If, yeah, Loof, you tried restraining a human who's that determined. It was a marge. There was some marge. Its anatomical structure didn't seem that delicate to me. I was like a what? Doing what? You made your way back to the beach. Okay, but that doesn't explain. I show my bleeding hands. Ah, oh, you crawled. Kara. Kara? Kara? Who's Kara? It's not my name. It's a term of endearment. It's an Irish thing. It's inappropriate. Inappropriate. What? I crawled? You sure did. Like a cat? Yup. All the way from the mountains? Like a bleeding mountain lion. Impressive. God, I cannot keep anyone's accent straight. Or lines. But you got the sickness. Ah. Shh. She doesn't need to know that. Uh, maybe you should sit down here. We're gonna have a talk. Possibly a long talk. Yes, talk. That's right. Since when can cats talk? Oh, for goodness sake. Since the dawn of time. How else do you think we communicate? <laughs> Well, stop splitting whiskers, Major. You know full well that the human is sighing. I think the revelation's here, Kara, and you can understand us. Yes, that too. Will someone please explain to me what the hell's going on? Well, we don't fully understand ourselves. At least not the details of how it works. I think being stood in the forest surrounded by a bunch of tall cats is about as much details as anybody would want. I agree. I agree, and it's more to the point. We're rather, happy, rather hoping you would be able to help us. You are the scientist, after all. What we do know is that the clock has started ticking for you. What do you mean? Well, there's no easy way to say it, Kara. You'd be catified. Catastrophic. <laughs> I'll be what? Whether you help us or not, you'll have a, you don't have a lot of time before. Uh, if I may, it would seem, and we are basing this on our experiences to date, that when a human finds themselves in what I believe you call the danger zone, they are vulnerable in many ways you were not previously. That is to say, you're screwed. You're not helping. Oh, mountain lion, there's no violence of any kind here. Forgive me for being such a bit panicked here. The, vulner the vulnerability to which Snooty Boo is referring to is simply put, if you're bitten or scratched by an elder cat, this is suddenly getting Lovecraft, within the danger zone, you will begin the process of change that will ultimately result in full feline transition. Catified. So basically you're telling me I'm a were cat? I look down, and amongst the scratches on my right hand are two distinctive puncture marks. The reality of the situation descends on me like a cold mist. Basically. Yes. My head is spinning. This is too much for me to take in. Take a breath now, Kara. You're not looking so good. What? Have I started to change? I feel my head for ears, fur. Everything seems to be normal. No. I just meant that you're looking a little bit shaky. Understandably so. I take a few deep, steady breaths that I calm myself before I say, Um, okay, so why? How? What? Give me some data. What have you got so far? Look, we'll answer anything that we can, but the truth is we have more questions than answers ourselves. So, you say you need my help. Uh, what exactly does that entail? Uh, well, just finding our friends would be a good start. The cats on this island, they've gone missing. We don't know what's happening to them, but the body count is rising, and we've hit a wall. A wall of ignorance, maybe? Hmm, how many times do I have to tell you? The Mulers are to blame. Uh, something tells me this is a very racist old man cat. Mueller's. Now, Fluffy Butt, there's no reason for name calling. Speaking of name calling, I'll remind you to call me Major, Madam. Major Fluffy Butt. Look, they can't help the way they are. It's lack of breeding, you know. Overbreeding, if you ask me. Yeah, this is definitely a racist old man cat. Again, Mueller's. Maybe I should change this to like an old ass cat and make the white one with a deep voice in. They're the elder cats, the island originals. They can't speak the way we can, hence the derogatory term. Mueller's. And how are they to blame exactly? Well, if I do that, there'd be no need for this elaborate kidnapping. I kind of like the, just the deep voice better. <laughs> it's hardly proving to be a roaring success, after all. 
Look, no, Kara, all we really know is that they're no longer safe on this island. The elders who live within the danger zone are hostile towards us. Not sure why, it's just always been that way, and now... Because cots are being taken, nowhere else is safe either. We expect the occasional mishap. We live in an undomesticated world here, after all. But lately, cats have been disappearing almost every day. Even the last humify catified went missing. I'm sorry, what? Let's not open old wounds, Kibble. Yes, onwards and upwards. Well, the first thing, this wear cat thing. Catification! Transition. Whatever! How does it work? Time passes, then you transform into a cat. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. It's a gradual process. It's different for everybody, but you won't just turn overnight. The clock is ticking, however. The first side effect of the transition is being able to understand us. Well, some of us. Not the elders, obviously. Not all the, not all the domestics, either. How do you have this whole heightened senses thing, the increased agility, the crazy body hair stuff? Don't you not worry the humans about all the details just yet. I'm assuming there's an antidote? I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed in that assumption. Hang on, you said there was someone else you put in this pose position. Well, let's hope you're a better bet than they were. Unfortunately, they weren't able to discover an antidote or get our friends back. I know where their notes are, though. Really? Trade. Huh? Scratch my chin. I mean, you'll help us and I'll give you their progress reports. All right. Uh, this seems like a good place to save. Uh, I will continue this one next time. Maybe I'll try and straighten out the voices beforehand and... We'll see what happens. But yeah, thank you for joining me and join me next time on this cat-tastic adventure. This is going to be a catastrophe. Matt, nah, it'll be perfect. Bye. <laughs>